everybody, it's Paul Neese from Torah Life Ministries. We have a wonderful family today that we met here at Sukkot. Uh, they have a great story, like I've heard so many people. They were going to the Christian church, doing a Christian thing, but then it was revealed to them about the Torah. Their eyes were opened, and now they're feeling a joy that they've never felt before. So let's check them out. Right now, here they go. Okay, here we are with Rich and Andrea, and uh, amazing story. They learned about Yahweh, the Torah, the scriptures, through diet. Right. Uh, almost the opposite of my story, because I was eating a healthy diet and I learned about Yahweh through coming through a healthy diet. Yeah. But it's similar in a way, so why don't you explain uh, what exactly happened? Okay. Well, one night we were in our living room, and at this time we were what we consider what we call ultra-Christians. You yeah. know, which is which meaning we were, we were Christians, but we were really trying to live it. And, um, but of course, we also believed the lies that God had, uh, Yeshua had done away with the law by his suffering sacrifice. Um, so, of course, we were eating uh, pepperoni pizza. And um, uh, I, I, I asked, why are we eating pork? Uh, the scriptures, I remember, it, it says that you cannot eat pork. It's actually an abomination to the Lord. And we were uh, dis disregarding for the moment about uh, the the um, that we were not under the law anymore. I wa we wanted to concentrate on what it said, and, and we and we felt like the Creator who created our bodies um, probably knows what's best to go in it. And so we just concentrated on that. And it was a few nights later that we saw Jordan Rubin on Benny Hinn. Right? Mm -hmm. It was on Benny Hinn. Right. He was doing an interview. And he said exactly what we were talking about. Right, he confirmed everything. Yes. Mm -hmm. He confirmed that uh, he, he called pork trash. It's like trash on a plate. And we were like, see, you know, there it is. We were just talking about this. This got to be from, from, from God. And right, so, so that started our searching. Mm -hmm. So from there. So that got you to look at the Torah mm -hmm. and to look at uh, not only food, but other things that you saw people doing, uh, yeah. and that you were doing, that right. just didn't line up with scripture. So, when you st when you eliminated pork from your diet, did it help you start to uh, feel better physically? Yes. Yes. Uh, I had whole heart palpitations, and uh, that were, uh, I mean, every minute of the day, constantly. Probably two. I, I averaged about two or three uh, palpitations per minute every day, and um, I figured. With your skin problems. Yeah, had eczema and stuff like that. And I figured that that would at least go away, uh, at least lessen. And what, what happened was they went away completely. I mean, zero palpitations at all. Crazy mm -hmm. out. Um, but to even, uh, to even move forward at all uh, with the diet, uh, with even um, following the laws, uh, the food laws of God, we had to go to the Brit, to the New Testament, and make sure. And we, and what we did was, we looked at uh, the scriptures, and there's probably what? What did you say? Five or six? Right. Five or six six scriptures that the are Christian used. world right. are used that, that we believe that we are no that we are able to eat what we want, and that pork is okay to eat. And um, we looked at those scriptures, and uh, we wanted to see why the Christian world thought that they could eat what they wanted. That everything was declared clean. Yeah, and it, it, it's actually very easy to bust. All those scriptures are, are, are ridiculously easy. There's, there's nothing in them with any validity at all. It, it's, it's actually quite easy. And it's like that for, which anyway, let me back up. That catapulted us into the Messianic movement. And we okay. wanted to know what are the truths are out there that we're missing, that the Christian world in general takes these scriptures and, and, and just builds a whole doctrine on, like the Sabbath day. If you look at why, uh, why they think, why we thought that the Sabbath day was on Sunday, it's only a scripture or two, and it's weak. They're all weak. And if you read it for yourselves, like you Their were saying ideas, earlier, not the scriptures. Yes. like you were saying earlier, if you read for yourselves and study for yourselves, you see that these things are not true, absolutely false. So you were Christian, following the church? Yes in the church, involved in Following the church. the church, and then as you started to read the scriptures yourself more and study it, you started to see that the church wasn't really teaching a scriptural message. 
Right. Uh, we that... decided to do away with commentary, all commentary, and we just took our scriptures and we just read and we just did exactly what it said. So after you change your diet, physically you started feeling better, yes. and, and then what happened spiritually? Were your eyes open more when you oh, started yes. as you started following it? Eyes wide open to scriptures that we never even seen before. It's like you can read the whole thing, you know, and especially the whole New Testament, and it's like you didn't even see these verses before in these scriptures and, and the understanding, the, some of the true understandings uh, from them. And um, as I was telling you earlier, when we first um, found out about this walk, we just knew that we just wanted to obey. And we saw in the scriptures that we we must obey God's food laws. We must. Mm. It is not an option. Right. And um, so we said, well, what else is there that we're not doing that we should be doing or we are doing that we shouldn't be doing? Right. So um, from there, we started changing, and we did not know that there was a Messianic world. We didn't know it existed. And so we thought, we said, it was funny, we said, is there, is there anybody else out there like us? Right, when we were doing our Sukkot, we thought we, we were by ourselves. We thought we were, yeah. We were doing our Sukkot, we didn't know anybody else on the planet was doing it. Maybe Judah was doing it, but we didn't know that there was a whole world out there. And that was kind of funny, because I was like, is, you think anybody else knows about this? <laughs> you know? So as you started to learn that there were others doing this, what was the reaction from your Christian friends that you grew up with when you started to tell them, you know, that there are some things we're going to be changing in our lives? What was the reaction? We had a we had a couple of friends that came out of the church with at the same time as us, not with us. It was just right at the same time. Um, some of them ended up going back into the church. Um, we had friends that didn't want to be our friends anymore. They they said we fallen from grace yeah. was was their reaction. That's a popular line. Right. Um, we had family that didn't agree with what we were doing. They thought it was too Jewish. Um, yeah. And now they've they've come along where they still remain in the church, yet they, they want to know more about what we're doing and why we're doing it. Yeah. And, you, and we've learned that all you can do is tell people uh, what you feel is the truth and right. what you're seeing as the, as the truth. And it's, it's like Yeshua said, uh, that, that their, their, their hearts are waxed, you know? Well, that, it, the yeah. disciples said, why do you speak in parables? Why don't you just speak plainly? They said, because their hearts are waxed. They and, need to search it out. And that's what we've seen is we can actually take, a, take an issue to someone, to my mother, for example. I can take an issue. Um, and show them the scriptures and actually prove it. And if there was a court of law right there or a jury, done deal. You know, it was a proven thing. I take a couple of scriptures, see my, but when someone's heart is waxed, they're not going to get it. Unless and, they search it out for themselves. Yes. And, and really want it, like we really did. So, it, so it, back then, uh, did you have a beard back then? I had a, uh, an on your face beard. I mean, uh, but because I had of what stubbles. The scripture said. I had stubbles, and through the years, you just start to feel like I want to. I want it to grow. Because this is full grown. That's all. Oh, that's is, all it'll do. Yeah, <laughs> right now. This is months and months, and uh, you know, Yah, Yah gives us what He wants. But I just, you know, we're we're called to be holy as He is holy, right? And and we're we're, we're to want to be like our Father Yeshua. And uh, from the scriptures, it says that the Messiah's beard will be ripped out. And so we know that he had a nice handful enough. enough to rip out. So we know that our father had a beard, a big beard, a nice beard. Mm -hmm. And so I go with that. You know? And uh, what about you? Uh, I see you wearing a head covering and you dress very modestly. Were you dressed like this before you uh, found I was not. The scriptures? I, no, even in, in the church, uh, I wore the tight jeans, the whatever was trendy. Uh, I'm ashamed of, of how I used to dress and I just felt very convicted to cover up and be modest and to not show skin or, or figure or and even put a head cover on because because I'm married and, and, I, and I do have a head, my husband, and I, and I do agree with Corinthians where it says that the woman is to put a head cover on. 
So, uh, what would your advice be to people that are in the church, young couples in the church, and uh, they want to learn? They want to learn more. What would your advice be to them? To do away with all commentary and to to pray very hard and, and seek. Yeah, and to search it out, and to start at the beginning, to start with Torah, just go from there. Yeah, to to, to be uh, very careful with commentary. You know, for, you know, we've got at least in the beginning. Yeah, right, that's right. In the beginning, we just we put away the commentary. Yeah. Of course, we we, we use it for reference now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so at the time, you know, we had had 30 years of commentary. we you know, and and the. The guys on the suits on the stage and the, their preaching and their interpretations and all that. You got to study for yourself. We're to be. We are called to be good workmen, approved and study approved children of the one true God. So you were at one time like the average Christian, yeah. and now you're messianic believers. Yes. Is your life more joyful now? Oh yes, yes, it is. It, it is joyful, but um, yeah, that it is. It, it, there's, there's, a, there's a whole other sermon on joy and, and what it means and all that, but um, yes it is, and, and it, it's also still uh, a fight every day. It's, it's a daily fight because we're called to be perfect, and, you know, and so that strive to be perfect, you know, is, is a daily, it's a fight against the universe daily. Do you think the people that go to churches are being ripped off or told a half a message? Absolutely. I wow. think it's the same repeated message. Um, in many different files, um, they just put a file out, and they're very careful what to say and what not to say, because it's a it's a business, and the money must continue to come in because the buildings are gargantuan. Wow. Right? Yeah. Do you have a blog or a, or a website or anything? No, we don't. No, we don't. so you just a uh, family, just living by example. Yes. Trying. Trying well, that's to. great. Thank you for being a guest on uh, Torah Life Ministries. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, everybody. Paul Neese and Torah Life Ministries, another great interview with the wonderful family. Yahweh's just blessing me with great people in my life to interview and to show you that there's more to it than just some words on a paper. You know, it's putting it into action. This is Paul Neese with Tour Life Ministries. If you have any comments or questions or suggestions, just post them below the video. Until then, have a great day and we'll see you again soon. Seek the truth, avoid the evil, learn Yahweh's way.